So in my last video, a lot of you asked about my Anki settings and I, I'm actually really surprised I never made a video on this because I actually kept my Anki settings very simple, kept most of the things the same, but I'm going to do a detailed video about exactly what I use because it's worked like a charm for me and hopefully you'll benefit from it because it's relatively simple and easy to follow. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so let's just get straight into it. The main thing I want to talk about first is the preferences, because those are still settings that are important for the holistic functioning of Anki. I'm a very simple guy. Most of my settings are actually not anything different from the default, which is why I didn't feel the need to make this video. But I think a lot of people get so caught up in the settings and trying to optimize these small things, when in reality, it really won't matter as long as you change a few things that I'm going to tell you about. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is um, my next day, I usually start it at 11 p.m. So most people like to start their days in the morning where their cards reset. I actually start it at 11 p.m. because I usually like to work throughout the day and end my day at night. Because I do all of my reviews at night, sometimes I add a bunch of new cards in the evening, and I basically finish at night and then I'll reset at night. This is just a personal preference, but that's entirely up to you. I believe this learn ahead limit basically allows you to see about 20 minutes into the future. So if you are going to see a card in 20 minutes, um, in the next 20 minutes and you have no cards left, you'll see those cards. And I think, again, this is all default. Everything here is pretty much default. I don't think I've changed anything except this. Um, sorry, prereq from the future here. I do want to make sure I point this out. I do have this function that I did change, and this function is basically show new cards after reviews. And the whole point of this is I will finish my reviews first, and then I will see my new cards. And I like doing it this way because usually I'm doing my reviews at the end of the day. So it's really good for me to finish all my reviews and then Throughout the whole day, I usually have made a bunch of new cards, so I'll finish my reviews, and then at the end of the day, I'll pretty much summarize and go through all of the new cards I made. So I wanted to correct myself because I did say that the only thing I changed was this, but in reality, I have changed this, and usually I do my new cards after my reviews, uh, just because it helps me keep things organized, it goes a bit faster. If you intermingle new cards with reviews, I just find that it gets to be a bit more confusing, it takes more time, and so I just do my new cards after my review. Now, back to scheduled programming. And then just, these are all backups, and I don't think I use anything else really here except for that. Now let's go into the deck settings, the specific deck settings that you all wanted to know about. So now to access deck settings, you usually go here next to the deck, you go to options. And again, I did not change much. I told you I'm a very simple guy because a lot of these numbers scare me. So the only thing I really did change was one, I want to make sure new cards when I add them, they get shown to me in random order. Because sometimes if you add a bunch of cards, you may add a bunch of cards, I don't know, about hemochromatosis, and then you may add a bunch of cards about Wilson's disease. But the problem is, if those cards get shown back to you, you don't want the cards from hemochromatosis to be shown to you first, and then the cards from Wilson's disease, because you're going to know purely based on the order what's coming. So here I usually have show new cards in random order. And then the other thing is I increased my new cards per day limit to 9,999. And the reason for that is when I make new cards, I want to do them as fast as possible, get them into my knowledge bank. Part of this is because I'm currently studying for my step two exam, so I need to just get everything in my head as soon as possible. But in general, I, I'm just a big believer that if you make cards yourself, you should just try to integrate them into your bank. Because if you make your cards today and you don't see them until three days from now, then there's no point of making them today. When you make your cards today, it gives you a primer, and that way when you actually go through them and review them, you're actually already one step ahead because you already had a first pass when you made them. And so that's why I don't have a limit on my new cards per day. I do as many as possible. And these settings here, I believe that those are pretty much the same settings that um, everyone has. These are default settings. I don't mess with these at all. I've never messed with them. Okay, so now let's go into this. This is reviews. So basically, again, the only thing I changed here was to change the maximum number of reviews that I do per day up to like whatever the maximum was. And I believe that's 9,999. And you guys have already seen me. I do a lot of flashcards. I do a lot of reviews. So I didn't want to have a limit on my reviews. Because as I said, the whole point of doing flashcards is to do as many as possible. So that way you can stay up to date with your knowledge. If you're going to limit yourself, and you're going to limit your own reviews, there's really no point of using this flashcard app. You should just review lectures then. But the whole point is, if you have a certain number of reviews, try to do them regularly. Try to do all of them. Because the more you do, the more those dots will get filled and the more likely you are to have a holistic understanding. Again, I believe these 
these, I don't think I've modified them at all. These are the default. And honestly, even if these were not the default settings, you guys should just make these your settings because I've been using them for three years and they've worked like a charm for me. I really like these settings. Um, but anyway, let me let me go back to this mod of maximum interval. This maximum interval is basically the maximum amount of time you'll have to wait before you see a card again. Usually it's like 180 days, which is six months. And so if you right now are studying for step one and you're an MS1, I recommend that you keep the maximum interval at about six months because it's fine for you. But let's say you're now in your dedicated period and you're studying for step one. That's when you want to decrease the maximum interval. And that's when I decrease mine. And that's why mine currently is at about 32 days. And the reason for that is because I want to see cards much more quickly, right? And this is why I said this whole deal of this whole thing, I don't care that much because these are the default settings. The biggest thing that I care about is the fact that I, regardless of what these settings are, I will make sure to see every card at least once before I take this test, or at least twice, right? Because I have maybe eight months. I mean, maybe I have eight weeks, right, for step one. By making your maximum interval 30 days, you are guaranteed that you'll see every card, regardless of how easy you think it is, at least twice before you take step one. That's currently in your deck, right? And so that's why I recommend that if you're not studying for step one right now, don't worry about this and keep this at 180 days. But the moment you get to your dedicated, decrease this down to about 30 days. And when you move it to 30 days, what you're doing is you're increasing the frequency at which you're going to see cards. And yes, that's going to come with you having to do a lot more cards. That's the negative of this. But the good part is you will see a lot more cards. And again, this whole algorithm, even though it may matter a bit, it won't matter nearly as much when you have this check in play, right? Because now if there's really a concept I don't get, I will see that card a lot, right? I won't just see it twice. I'll see it like six to seven times before I take my test, which is exactly what I want. And so this maximum interval, again, if you are not studying for step one and you're just long-term studying for it as an MS1, keep this at 180 degrees, 180 days. But if you're studying and you're dedicated, move it to about 32 days so you can see those cards more frequently. And I did that for step one and it did work well for me. Um, I think again, these are all defaults. I don't think I changed anything except this. So the leech, does everyone know what a leech is? So a leech is basically, um, Anki will automatically call a card a leech if you get it wrong, like a certain number of times. So in my case, if I get a card wrong 12 times, Anki will card, call that card a leech because it's like, dude, you're such a dumbass. Why have you gotten this wrong 12 times? You should just not even do it anymore. Um, and so what it'll do is that it'll usually suspend that card, but I've moved it to tag only because when you do Anki as much as I do, even the cards that you do know really well, you'll end up getting wrong more than 12 times. And so if you have this thing on to suspend, it'll suspend that card if you get it wrong 12 times. If you press one 12 times on that card, it will be suspended. Do not do that. Make it so that it's only tagged as a leech. Because if you suspend it, you'll lose cards and you'll just completely lose them from your memory because they will never show up again. So keep it as tag only. So that way when you don't get a card right for 12 times, it'll tag it as a leech and you can go back and refer to it in the tag section, but it won't suspend it. So it'll still always be in your deck and you can always be like, damn, I have a lot of trouble with this. So I'm going to go and review it because it'll be tagged as a leech, but it won't be suspended. And suspended cards are usually cards that are completely going to be taken out of your deck. So a suspended card will be in your deck, but you'll never see it. It's like a student who got suspended from school, right? A student who got suspended from school is still a part of the school, but you won't see him. <laughs> so it's kind of the same thing with Anki cards. But the point is, don't have it on suspend only. I suggest you move it to tag, and I usually increase my leash threshold to about 12 or 13. Because when you do a Anki a lot, you will eventually pretty much mark most cards as a leech, because it's really hard to know them, right? Um, and again, I think these three settings are probably the default. And if they're not the default, just make these your default because I've been using them for years and they've been great. Um, okay, and this is irrelevant. I don't use this at all. Um, I think this is an add-on. I used to use it a lot, but now I'm just endogenously pretty fast. So I don't use it as lot at all. At all. Um, it's the, I think it's the speed up add-on. Uh, the speed up add-on. I have a video on it, so I'll link it right up there. But I don't use this at all, so don't worry if you don't see it. It's related to an add-on. And um, those are my settings. So as I said, the biggest thing is make sure you keep these settings about the same. I would increase my new card limit to the maximum. The next thing is I would increase my review card limit to the maximum. 
um, I would decrease my maximum interval. Let's say you're studying for a test and you have a, uh, a deck that's related specifically to a test. Decrease your maximum interval for that test leading up to test day. And then afterwards, you can increase and back up again. So right now I'm studying for step two. So my maximum interval is relatively short. The moment I finish step two, I'm going to move it back up to about 180 days. So I'm not spending as much time doing as many cards. There would be many fewer cards with this. But when you're studying and you're in your dedicated, I keep my maximum interval very low so I can see a high volume of cards and know all the content as well as possible. Um, lapses, as I said, keep your leech action as tag only. And um, I think that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video about my settings really quick. Um, and so like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching.